Hi, good morning. I just love Psalm 45. I taught on this a very, very long time ago, and I've been feeling like we need to do it again. Um, so we're going to do that. Father, I thank you. I thank you for the word of God. I thank you that you gave us uh, all the songs in Psalms. And Father, there's so much that we can unpack uh, with each word. I ask this morning as I take some time on just a couple of verses that the Holy Spirit will minister through me, that we will all have ears to hear, including myself. And, and Father, we will be closer to you. We will have more understanding. We will flow with the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. You know that scripture um, that says, it's, it's a super scary one. It says that um, people stand before Jesus and they go on and on about how we've prophesied in your name and cast out demons. And he said, I did not know you. The know, knowing you means um, being one with you. And that is our walk with the Lord, that we would be one with him. And uh, you'll see this in this psalm. I just want to uh, start off with that. You'll see this in Psalm 45. So how about if we open up our Bibles? I'm going to read from, um, which one is this? New Living Translation. And then I'm going to read just the first two verses to start out. And then I'm going to read from the Passion. Beautiful words stir my heart. I will recite a lovely poem about the king. For my tongue is like the pen of a skillful poet. You are the most handsome of all. Gracious words stream from your lips. God himself has blessed you forever. And then from the Passion, it's titled The Wedding Song. For the pure and shining one by the prophetic singers of Korah's clan, it says, to the melody of lilies. Anybody know the melody of lilies from 2,000 years ago? Oh, yeah. (laughs) We forget that these are songs, right? Um, How many of you saw from years ago the TNT Bible series with David? Loved those, loved them. Um, He would just break out and start singing. And it's like, that's right. He did a bunch of these, right? So in the Passion, oh, my heart is on fire, boiling over with passion. Bubbling up within me are the most beautiful lyrics as a lovely poem to be sung for the king. Like a river bursting its banks, I'm overflowing with words, spilling out into this sacred story. And verse 2 Beautiful, beautiful, beyond the sons of men, elegant grace pours out through every word you speak. Truly God has anointed you, his favored one for eternity. Oh, such, such power. All right, so I want to unpack this for you, and you're going to love it if you've never heard it before, and hopefully if this is the second time, you're going to love it again. Um, This song... The Psalm 45 is actually the song of Father God singing through uh, the sons of Korah, it says. Remember that. Remember that. We forget that. When we worship and we have opportunity to sing our spontaneous songs, our prophetic songs, it's actually the Father singing through us. And here the Father is singing, and he's singing over his son, Jesus, And the theme specifically is his second coming. But there's so much that he says in this psalm, so much that he sings, so much that he prophesies, so much that he decrees and declares. It's just amazing. Um, Let me see some of it. Oh, how many of you, I grew up, very denominational church, so I thought God was distant. And I, I knew he loved me. But I didn't, I wasn't one with him, like I just mentioned. I mean, there was an understanding. There wasn't a flow of the Holy Spirit and relationship. I just thought he was there to correct me when I was wrong. How sad. So really, how is the Father? This first verse shows us characteristics about the Father. The Father is very emotional. 
He's very passionate. He, and, and, you know, how many of you, you talk to certain people, and you know if you talk to them about this one theme, they're just going to bubble over. What is it that we talk to Josh about? And he turns into an evangelist. Food, eating correctly. You know what I'm saying? Somebody, it might be football. Somebody, it might be uh, worship. Uh, somebody, it might be Jesus. You know, hopefully we're going to get one with the Holy Spirit, the Father, and the Son. And it's, we are going to be bubbling over like this. We should be like this. Amen. So he's not stoic or religious. And he feels very deeply, so deeply, he says he's overflowing. It has to come out. It's bubbling up. He cannot hold it back. Of course, obviously, the best, one of the best examples is when two people fall in love, and it's just sickening because all they do is talk about each other, and it's like, can, can you talk about anything else? I used to hate it in high school when my girlfriend would get a boyfriend because all of a sudden I'm not her friend anymore, or if I am with her, that's all I get to hear about. It's like, really? I have a boyfriend, but you know what? I can have a normal life. I don't have to talk about him all the time. You know what I'm saying? Well, the father is so passionate. He has so much love, so much respect. He believes so much in his son, Jesus. He has to tell everybody about it. He has to sing about it. In fact, the father reveals the son. The Son, Jesus, reveals the Father. And the Holy Spirit is at work with the bride so that she will hear the song of Jesus and join in. But we have to wake up and listen. We have to know this is going on. So many times, that's why I encourage us when we, when we have times of worship corporately, we can just turn off into religious mode. Yes, he loves us. Yes, he's present. But we just kind of go through it. And we should never go through it. Our hearts should always be tender. We should be joining one with him, one with heaven. All of what the worship is, is going on, we should be able to join in and lift up Jesus and know Jesus and love Jesus just like the Father did. In verse 1, the father is eager to tell the story of Jesus, and he can't wait to tell everyone that he is the king. He's the king of all kings. There's nobody that comes close. Anybody, when you were younger, say, my dad, my dad's stronger than your dad, and my dad can beat you up twice on Sunday, something like that. Jesus is just, there's not even an enemy that can come close. There's nobody. There's nobody as beautiful, as pure, as holy, as glorious. Never been. Take the best man, best queen, best woman, best anybody. Take the best one you can find throughout all of life, and there's nobody. Comes anywhere close. It's just Jesus. Say, it's just Jesus. He can't wait to tell the earth the beauty about the beauty of his son. The love the father has for the son. When the father sings this song, I, I mentioned this already in another way, the Holy Spirit is working from the north, south, east, and west to open our ears so we can join the chorus. One of the primary themes that churches, when they meet together, conferences, um, stuff on YouTube, uh, Facebook, one of the things that is missing is Jesus. Jesus is the foundation. Jesus is the most important. But that's the thing that's missing, especially in some of these mega churches. I mean, we can fall ourselves and do and just self-help, good stuff that's important, but we always have to come back to where the Father is, and that is Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Somebody's like, well, uh, the church I grew up in uh, for a couple years when I was a teenager, it's kind of baptist -y. they were more concerned about being balanced than allowing the Holy Spirit to move in your life and, and disciple you and grow. 
Jesus was not balanced, and the Father is not balanced. It, it's, that's just the truth. So Jesus is the good theme that moves the Father's heart, and it will also move your heart. And again, the Psalm 45, as you read through, uh, we will do some more later, um, the specific theme is his second coming, his return. And what is he going to do? He is going to be the conquering king that comes back. Judgments will be released to remove anything that hinders his love. That's what those judgments are for. We cannot fall prey to not understanding that part of his nature. He isn't just a sweet, pure, wonderful, loving uh, Jesus king that just loves everybody. Yes, he's given opportunity. He's died for them. But if they choose to reject him and reject his word and become his enemy and an enemy of his bride... He will protect his bride, and he will deal with them. So we have to know the truth of that and not be offended at the end of the day. The father declares that he is fairer than the sons of man, that he is the most beautiful. Uh, Jesus, on his right side as a man, this is where he is right now. He's on the right side. Uh, of the father he's pleading for the nations pleading for the nations he's the one that's praying for you sometimes um, I love this because it, it comes back to me sometimes I'm in a situation uh, there may be a lot of pain there may be um, how are we going to make it through this kind of thing right and all of a sudden I remember Jesus you are praying for me. You are interceding for me right now. Who could I ask a better, better anybody to pray for? But that's one of the things he's doing. He's praying for us personally. He's praying for his bride. He's praying for the nations to come to the truth, to come to the truth of who he is and, and all of him. So just right now, for one second, close your eyes. I want you to imagine, because this is the truth, there's a real heaven, there's a real throne, and there's a real Jewish man who stands there, and he's praying to make intercession for you. If you understand the capacity of that, the degree of that, and you let it wash over your heart, how can you not receive his word? How can you not sing back to him and worship him, the rightful king of kings, bridegroom king, and lord of lords who loves you? The father is always singing over the son. There will be a time when the season changes and this song goes out. You are fairer than the sons of men. Hear the emotion in it. You know, can you imagine somebody saying, but my wife is the most beautiful. Or a wife, I can imagine it more, a wife saying, oh, my husband is the best husband. He is so handsome. There is none that compare to my husband. And not only is he handsome, he can build houses. <laughs> he can build houses and, oh. Think of all the conquerors that have gone out before the Lord. Think of all the nobility and conquests that take over the land. I was watching a quick little uh, documentary on J.P. J. P. Morgan, and as a boy, he wanted to emulate Napoleon. He saw the whole story on Napoleon because he was so powerful, but nothing like Jesus. There's just no conquering king like him. In fact, there's a scripture. Where is that? I'm getting ahead of myself. 2 Thessalonians 2.8. When the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. Jesus will 
that we know from um, Revelation of Jesus at the end of the Bible, we know that uh, there's going to be the Antichrist, the lawless one. Understand that word, lawless, not submitted to God's authority. Not submitted to authority. That's one of the things as a parent we should teach our children to submit to authority. Unless they're asking you to sin, it's really important. But is it not true that now the culture we live in, no authority. Nobody wants authority. They all want to be an island unto themselves. But we all need to understand how that works. Jesus is the ultimate authority. And he set up things to protect us. So, uh, where was I? Almost. Imagine the greatest songwriters of all time. That's Jesus. The greatest artist. The most beautiful. Jesus has all these qualities wrapped up. In one, being multiplied, we can't even imagine the beauty of this man. We barely even peer into the beauty of this man. He is fairer than than the sons of men, more beautiful than anyone that's ever been created in every single way. His heart is beautiful. And the Father says this about Jesus. He is grace poured out on his lips. Is there anybody that you can talk to like Jesus where life comes out. When they speak, life, you can feel it come into you. I mean, it's easy to probably think of examples of the opposite, where you're like, oh, I just can't be around that person. It's all negativity. It's all depression. It's all oppression. It's all critical. See, we want to be one with Jesus. The Father says he has grace upon his lips. Grace gives life. He doesn't go around, Jesus, even when he is confronted with a situation with an enemy and starts swearing. Nope, 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 never. Even even what he did, even the things he said, to the religious leaders, and if you notice, he wasn't super nice. He never sinned. Grace empowers us. It means um, empowerment or power. Can you imagine when he speaks, the power that comes out? So back to that 2 Thessalonians 2.8, it says with his breath, he's going to destroy this lawless one, who if you read Revelation has done so much destruction to the Christians, to God's prophets and apostles and those that are here at the moment, at that time. But Jesus just, the brightness of who he is and one breath of his mouth. I wonder, will fire come out? (laughs) I don't know, but try to imagine that power. It's crazy. And then, how about Have you ever been around somebody that you are not interested in the subject they're bringing up? But then as they start talking, they are so persuasive. And all of a sudden, you have an ear to hear what they're saying. Jesus is like that, only in the best of terms. No manipulation, none of that, no condemnation, but truth, pure truth, like passionate. So then you become interested. You can't help yourself. (laughs) He gives, when he speaks, life, energy. He gives love and acceptance. So he makes you feel alive. That's why it's so important to tune your ear in to just one word from Jesus. One word from him can change everything. I, I caught a teaching by, I wish I could remember his name, and I would encourage all of you to go, go check this out. Um, Morningstar did a conference right around the end of the year, and the, I believe it was their first teaching. He's a general, and I don't know if you know his name, but he was several years ago... Um, He's a very strong Christian, and now he's with Morningstar. Um, but he was with um, the president, one of the presidents, and 
uh, because of something that he had said, they came against him. Uh, it had to do with Islam. And, you know, as a general, you're general of the United States military force in one of those divisions, I don't know, Army, Navy, whatever it is. Um, you're going to go, you're going to war. Things are happening. Uh, this might have been, um, in, was it 2001 when the towers came down? Is it that long ago? It might have been back then where now they have to sit down and counsel and, you know, who did this and what, it, what are we going to do because of this? Um, so he has to make a choice. Back then, <laughs> he wasn't choosing to be politically correct. He was choosing to say what he felt like was actually going on. So he had Middle East, like he was on the hit list for the Middle East, and practically all of the bigwigs came out against him. And as he tells his story, I'm really sorry that I'm not telling it very well, but as he tells his story, I'm thinking, oh my goodness, the pressure he and his family were under. Because you know from the very get-go, if they're going to come against you, you're, you've been picked for a high position, and they're going to come against you in the government, mostly what happens is right off, there's an apology that comes forth for what you said. And he was not going to apologize for what he said. It was the truth. And they needed to know it and hear it. So, um, but the thing I got from his teaching was this. He, the way he put it, the words he used were just so good. So I really encourage you on YouTube, go there, uh, Morningstar. So often when we are under pressure from stuff that's happening coming in, uh, and, and, and I'm looking around at you guys, and I know almost all of you, I know the stuff. It's bad. What we want to do is escape. And we want Jesus to come in on his horse right now and just fix it all, because it seems like it's too overwhelming. And what he was saying is we should instead embrace what we're in, allow the Lord to work through it, and we will be much stronger. But, but it's just really not what we do. It's really not what we do. Pressure comes. I mean, what's the world do? Pressure comes, hit the bottle. Pressure comes, get on the computer, and whatever you're addicted to, go there. Hours and hours and hours. Play the games. Go find somebody, have sex with them. Pressure comes, you know, take it out on your family. Pressure comes, go shopping. <laughs> I can say I've done that one before. Instead of pressure comes and it's, I'm going to the throne because Jesus knows me. Jesus knows this is happening. I'm not alone in this. He's with me. And there's something beautiful that's going to come out of this. Right? The grapes get crushed to make the wine. Some of us are being crushed right now. And you know what's going to come out if we don't run and we don't do the world's thing? A beautiful aroma to Jesus. We will be one with him. Heather, can you guys go on up? So his lips, verse 2, are dripping with grace. It's poured upon his words. He doesn't have a little bit of grace. He's got a ton, a lot, enough. It's spilling over. Father, I just ask right now that even just these two verses, that you would minister them to our hearts, that we would be able to release back to you this morning worship and love and receive your grace Receive your empowerment during the times of pressure. And Lord, that as we are crushed, that you will bring out of us a sweet aroma. That we would be a sweet aroma to those around us. Forgive us, Lord, where we've turned to complaining. We felt like we were alone. 
We forgot you were right there saying, come, come, let me hold you, let me embrace you, let me direct you. I'll help you through this. I'll help you with your enemies. We forgot and we went to our own devices. Jesus, we love you so much and we thank you for this word. We thank you that the Father was overflowing. Overflow us with your love that we may love you and love others. In Jesus' name, amen.